welcome to the Minnehaha County Jail. By now you've been through the intake process and you're waiting to be moved to the classification unit. This video is intended to help give you a better understanding of some of the rules, regulations, and policies that are important for you to be aware of. We want to make your stay at the jail a safe one. You can help make that happen by knowing and understanding the rules and cooperating with staff and other inmates. The conditions under which you are housed and how you live here will be largely determined by your behavior and how you react to others. The Minnehaha County Jail is committed to providing a safe environment for all persons incarcerated here. The jail maintains a zero-tolerance policy for any type of sexual activity, consensual or non-consensual, between inmates or between inmates and staff. Notify the staff immediately if you are involved in or become aware of any such activity. You may ask to speak to the shift supervisor or senior officer on duty if you need to report any such incident. The information you give will be confidential. When you came to jail, you were taken to our intake area and processed. Your property was taken, inventoried, and placed in a property room. Your money was counted and will be deposited in an account from which you can make commissary purchases like candy and hygiene items. Money can be deposited into your account by friends or family and they can add money to your account by sending it through the mail or dropping it off at the jail in person. The jail accepts cash and money orders only. No personal checks will be accepted. You may have already made your first court appearance where you were informed of your criminal charges and bond conditions. Information about your health, medical records, where you work, and who we should call in case of an emergency was taken. If at any time you feel that your release date, time in custody, or bond is miscalculated or is different from what you believe it should be, contact your housing unit officer immediately. There are two types of bonds that may be used to get released from prison. A cash bond means that someone will actually have to bring cash to the jail. Cash or surety means that you may use the services of a bonding company. All the local companies will accept collect calls from the housing units. You, a friend, or relative can make that call. There are phones for use in each housing unit. You should know that whoever you call will be charged for the call and the phone call will be recorded. All calls you make will be collect calls. All calls are automatically disconnected after 15 minutes. You will have to wait approximately one minute before making another call. If the phone bill of the party you are calling becomes excessive, the number can be blocked until the bill is paid. The emergency call button in your cell can be used to call for assistance in case of an emergency only. Emergencies must consist of life or death medical problems, fights or disturbances, suicide attempts, fires, water flooding or sewer backup. All other non-emergency problems will continue to be handled through direct staff contact. Anyone abusing the emergency intercom system may be subject to disciplinary action. You may ask to see medical staff or mental health staff at any time. Please ask a staff member if you have any questions. If you do not have money in your prisoner account for a period of two weeks, you will be considered indigent and may receive certain items free. They include hygiene items and one pencil and pad every two weeks. You are allowed to send one letter per day. Initially, you'll be housed in the classification unit to determine the level of supervision required. Your classification is based on your current charges, current behavior, past criminal history, and past jail history. How you behave and cooperate with staff will affect your housing assignments. Good behavior will be rewarded with more freedom within the jail. Considerations will be made for those with special needs. The Minnehaha County Correction Center is a work release facility located at 1900 West Russell in Sioux Falls. If you are authorized work released by your sentencing judge and you're not convicted of a crime of violence, sex crime, or had a previous poor program history on work release, you may be eligible to be on the work release program. To start the work release program, you will need to have money to pay for the program in advance. Also, you will fill out a work release application that will be reviewed by the CCC sergeant. The CCC sergeant will review the application and either approve or deny it. If it is denied, you'll be told why. 
After you watch this video, you'll be given an inmate guidebook. You should take the opportunity to read the guidebook, and if you have any questions about the book, make sure you ask your housing unit officer for clarification. You are allowed to have the following property in your cell. Five personal photographs with no backing Polaroid, and sexually explicit photos are not accepted. A reasonable amount of legal papers, prescription eyeglasses, hearing aids and dentures, medical alert bracelets, one pair of contact lenses, one Bible, Koran, or other religious book, two books, jail-issued linen and clothing not to exceed jail-issued amount, one bar of soap, one tube of toothpaste, one comb, one stick of deodorant, one bottle of shampoo, one bottle of conditioner, two hair ties, one roll of toilet paper, over-the-counter medications within the authorized amount, two notepads for writing paper, three pencils, a reasonable amount of consumable commissary items to be determined by staff, personal letters also within a reasonable amount as determined by staff, and any other item authorized by jail staff. While you're in jail, you will sleep with your head toward the cell door at all times and have some skin that is not covered by your blanket. That can be your hand, leg, or your head. Any violation of this rule will be considered a breach of security, and you may be placed into lockup with disciplinary action. Lockups and formal head counts will be made throughout the day. Anytime an officer announces head count or lockup, all inmates must go immediately to their cell or bunk without question. Any violation of this rule will result in disciplinary action. There will be four formal counts in one day. You will be required to stand at your cell door or bunk with your inmate identification band visible to the officer that conducts the head count. All inmates are required to wear a jail-issued identification band at all times. Any removal, tampering with, or damaging to the ID band will result in disciplinary action. If you cooperate with staff and obey all rules, you can take part in a number of activities. You'll be allowed library, visitation, recreation, and church services. A variety of church services are available to you during your incarceration. A schedule is posted in the housing units, and services are done on a rotating basis throughout the jail. You may also request to see a chaplain or the religious leader of your choice during your stay here. You are encouraged to seek the opportunity to speak to a pastor or other religious leader if you feel the need. You may also be eligible for our GED, NA, and AA program. You'll be allowed to have visitors during available times. All visitation is conducted by video, and visitors must be at least 18 years of age or accompanied by a parent or guardian. You're allowed 30 minutes of visitation per visitor per day. Any tampering with video visitation equipment will result in termination of visitation rights. Your conversation with visitors may be reduced to audio and video only. Any video visitation with professional visitors such as attorneys or clergy will never be recorded. Each morning you'll be expected to clean your own cell. Day room and common area cleaning will be conducted prior to lockup for the night. You'll be expected to clean up after yourself. If you are not in your bed, it must be neatly made. No use of the phones or TV will be allowed until after morning inspection. Laundry will be done according to the schedule. You are responsible for all jail-issued items. The following areas are considered out of bounds for any inmate unless authorized by an officer. Another inmate cell. Within five feet of glass windows either inside or outside. Behind the officer's workstation or within the out of bounds area around the officer's workstation. Multi-purpose rooms. You are not allowed to leave the housing unit without permission. Loiter in the bathrooms or shower areas when not in use. Or enter the black painted and taped out of bounds areas. Only inmates assigned to housing on the upper level of the housing unit are allowed on the upper level, except for authorized cleaning duties and upon officer approval. Any loitering on the upper level is considered out of bounds. This includes the stairwells. Cell doors must not be propped open or prevented from normal closing or having closing and locking mechanisms blocked or altered. The windows on the cell doors and cell lights may not be covered at any time. You may not possess any personal property during movement unless you are being transferred to another housing unit or released from the facility. The exceptions to this rule include legal papers, library or program materials when applicable, or work assignment supplies. Items that are not allowed will be taken away and commissary items will be disposed of. There are no restrictions on the amount of incoming or outgoing mail for inmates. All incoming mail is subject to search 
Polaroids, postage stamps, greeting cards, and other letters with any stickiness will be kept in the inmate's property. Packages that come through the mail will not be accepted and will be returned to the sender unless prior approval has been obtained. Inmate mail procedures are explained in the guidebook. The staff at the jail are aware that someone who comes to the jail for the first, second, or even third time may be uncomfortable. This is a stressful event that can cause significant feelings of anxiousness, fear, and symptoms of depression with occasional suicidal thoughts. Many first-time inmates will feel so stressed and fearful they lose hope that things can improve in the future. They may develop ideas of hopelessness, thoughts of wishing for death, thoughts of suicide, and may even attempt suicide. Staff wants to assist all inmates in such states of stress, and we ask that if you feel overwhelmingly anxious, fearful, or depressed, and particularly if you have suicidal thoughts, please contact any staff member so that we can help with these problems. If you, as an inmate, are feeling anxious, fearful, sad, depressed, or suicidal, please contact any staff member for help. If you note those symptoms in other inmates, please inform jail staff so they can provide assistance to that inmate. Assistance to family members of incarcerated persons is available through the following agencies. Family Connection, 303 North Minnesota Avenue, phone number 357-0777. A Maki program, Big Brothers Big Sisters of the Sioux Empire at 334-1632. These agencies can provide support for families impacted by incarceration of a parent and can provide assistance for families that must travel long distances to visit someone in jail. Information on these agencies is available at the jail front desk or in the housing units. Once an inmate is sentenced, that inmate will be required to pay the standard $10 daily fee set by the jail for room and board. If you violate any of the rules of the jail or get involved in any confrontation with other inmates or staff, disciplinary action may be taken against you. Give me a hand, This is the end of the first If this occurs, a write-up will occur and a disciplinary hearing will be held. You may face criminal charges, lose privileges, be reclassified, or face time in lockup. No, finish it. Any time an officer or staff member gives an order, it is expected that it will be followed immediately or you will be subject to disciplinary action. You are expected to get along with fellow inmates and staff. Quit resisting now. Quit resisting. If you have a problem of any kind, advise staff and they'll try to resolve that problem for you. If you try to resolve the problem on your own and an argument or fight occurs, you'll be held accountable for your actions. The rules provided in this video and in the inmate guidebook will be enforced to ensure a safe and secure environment. If you do not completely understand any of these rules or if you have any questions, ask your housing unit officer for an explanation. Cooperation on your part will go a long way in making this as safe as possible and ensure little trouble with staff. <laughs>